Hi, Mark. Thank you so much for joining me today. How are you doing? I'm good. Great. Good. That's, um, that's awesome to hear. I'm excited to talk to you, learn a little bit about this upcoming event that GBC has going on. Uh, but the first thing is for you to tell the people who you are, if you could tell them what you do and a little bit about the esteemed organization that you lead. Sure. So I'm Mark Anthony Thomas. I lead the Greater Baltimore Committee. Uh, and we have over 400 partners who are all committed to broad our regional economy, addressing some of our civic challenges, and collectively partnering to advance the region. Awesome. Thank you so much for that introduction. And so now, you know, the GBC has a momentous event coming up at the end of May. Can you tell us what that event is and who is welcomed out to it? Yeah, so every year for the last 69 years, we have our annual meeting. Mm -hmm. And last year, our board wanted to change the format, right? We historically have had a sit-down dinner, but when you think about an economic development organization, we should be celebrating new places and, 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 and different models that expose people to the broader region. And so we chose Trade Point Atlantic to be the host this year. And so it'd be a great celebration. It also will serve as the place where we'll unveil our 10 year economic opportunity strategy. Mm -hmm. And so the industrial part of our economy is part of our future. And so it will be a place to celebrate, but also reflect where we're heading. Awesome. And you know, you just mentioned the unveiling of the 10 year economic plan for the region. Um, I know obviously you can't get into the, the fine details of it, but could you tell, what can you tell us about it and, and why is it so significant, this plan? Well, if anything, if you've watched the transformation that's happened at the GBC over the last year, we pursued Tech Hub, we've mm -hmm. launched an effort to do a regional brand, we've tackled the city's vacant housing challenge, uh, and we've done a number of things. The 10-year plan will institutionalize that level of work, right? Where we'll basically say, these are the types of things that we think the region needs to collaborate on. These are the areas of big opportunity that we see growth and potential job opportunities. And these are the way that we want to collaborate to actually create the opportunities we think are really critical for the region. And so we'll all be packaged pretty nicely, but mm -hmm. it will give us then a framework to have a lot of conversations over the next few months. And so you recently obviously released um, the investment scorecard for the region. And obviously now we have this economic plan coming down the line. What is your current read on the strength of the greater Baltimore economy? Assume that we are a hidden secret. We have a lot of great assets. People obviously know the institutions that are here. But when you think about the development language and the narrative that the rest of the world looks for markets to where they're expanding and investing, we haven't had the chance to tell that story the right way. And so the scorecard, the 10 year plan, our investment summit that we're hosting in the summertime are all foundational efforts to start to build awareness around Baltimore as a place that people should be investing and Baltimoreans mm -hmm. are people that folks should be investing in. Absolutely. And, you know, from your perspective, what do you think are some of the opportunities as well as the challenges for, for the greater Baltimore economy right now? So I would say we have a ton of opportunities. Our industrial economy across new emerging tech areas. And I won't spoil all the pieces yet, but when mm -hmm. you look across all seven jurisdictions that we serve, they each have different areas that they want to see growth and see opportunity. We'll lean into that. Um, obviously, our challenges, and this is consistent across the country, mm -hmm. housing is a big area of, of, of challenge that we have unique issues that if we collaborate and bring the right voices to the table, we can actually put sustainable solutions in place. Um, assume, though, that there is a huge gap of opportunity by just our universities, our business community, and our philanthropic organizations all working together. And really GBC is set up to be a place where that collaboration happens. And mm -hmm. so to me, the challenges aren't without the right players who can really make an impact. Absolutely. And, you know, as you mentioned, housing is a challenge, not just here, but uh, across the country. And you also mentioned you were working, um, you know, with other partners to help ease this vacant housing crisis that we're, you know, facing in Baltimore. Can you talk a little bit about that work, please? Yeah, this is, 
unique to a lot of post-industrial cities where the blight that has come from just the decline in the in industrial economy in those markets, mm -hmm. we're not absent of that challenge, right? And so mm -hmm. what people see as a visible blight um, has layers of complexity. It starts though with the North Star and the work that we've done with the city and with Build and with all of our partners was to quantify what is the scalable solution, at least the cost that we need to really plan for if we're going to address the issue. The next focus will be how do we implement, right? Mm -hmm. And we've been very successful to secure public funding. We have a lot of private partners that want to be very active in how we solve this challenge at the grassroots level to the neighborhood level. And the next few months will be spent for us mapping out what are those fundamentals that have to be in place for private investment to really flow. Absolutely. And, you know, during last year's annual meeting, GBC released its uh, multi-year agenda, which obviously includes 12 initiatives centered on economic opportunity, transportation, infrastructure, and collective impact. Can you kind of give a high level overview of that, of what that agenda uh, outlines and again, why, why that's so significant? Yeah. And as soon as that, the multi-year agenda will fold into the tenure plan, right? Mm -hmm. What we wanted to do was map out a path that gave some direction to all the transition that GBC went through, right? When we merged with the Economic Alliance, people weren't sure what direction we'd head. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was important for us to center economic leadership. And so the 12 initiatives being creating the 10-year plan, establishing the brand, pursuing game-changing opportunities, those were things that we thought were really critical for the GBC to be a trusted voice as an economic leader. The mm -hmm. issues are all in support of us creating an environment for opportunity and growth, a stronger transportation system, major investments in infrastructure, and then collective impact from a private sector that has a stake in how we solve the problems, right? Mm -hmm. Safety, vacants, helping small businesses and procurement opportunities and local hiring. All of those are the fundamental things that really were set up to do well and that will continue to do that work over the next few years. And as you've kind of alluded to, you know, partnership collaboration is kind of the crux of, of GBC's work. Um, just wanted to give you the opportunity to sh uh, highlight some of the partners you've been working with. I recently saw you at um, Upsurge Baltimore's annual meeting. So if there's any partners that you'd like to just talk a little bit about the work you're doing with them. Yeah, so I'll speak at a high level because I don't want to miss yeah. anyone. <laughs> but just on Tech Hub, for example, we have 48 partners who are part of that consortium, right? And so that's an impressive number by every metric that the federal government is accustomed to seeing. Mm -hmm. And so these are all organizations who are committed to growing our tech ecosystem, either through creating jobs or creating pathways for new startups to grow and create huge opportunities in the region. But that's just one of the areas of collaboration, right? We're working with the police department and the Michael Bloomberg Foundation has an I-team that's helping on innovative ways that we can support police retention and recruitment. And so we truly are building platforms for that collective activity, um, even if it's behind the scenes, but what you'll feel was business leaders and philanthropic organizations who feel like they're more engaged than they've ever been at least through the GBC to support the region. Awesome. And you know, I know you haven't been in the role for super long, but you've definitely hit the ground running. Um, what what are you most proud of so far? I think the, the excitement on the ground, right? Mm -hmm. When you move into a market and you obviously can bring a lot of expertise and experience, but the impact that people feel that you're changing hope, you're giving people a sense that we can solve problems and that the partners who you work with care about Baltimore. To me, that's been the most exciting impact because that wasn't the standard feeling that I feel like I found when I landed, that there are people who yeah. are skeptical and unsure if the merger would even work. I believe we've turned that corner and now we can mm -hmm. really focus on doing great work. Absolutely. It definitely certainly is 
um, exciting times within in the region. Um, you know, can you just share with Baltimore residents, Baltimore businesses, how they can engage with the GBC um, with its work, research, et cetera? Yeah. So in our, my mind, we're a coalition of the willing, right? So if you want to join GBC and be a partner, then we give you an opportunity to really engage on all the issues that we're working on or pursuing opportunities that you think are great for the region. It has to be a regional impact, mm -hmm. but that is really the metric that we set as something we'll consider. Mm -hmm. But if business can join, then they can obviously participate in all the different things and programming and opportunities and conversations to really be more versed on the things that we're working on, but also contribute to how we address it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, uh, Mark, again, for your time today. Is there anything else that you'd like to plug before we close out our, our talk today? No, I think if you've never been to Trade Point Atlantic, you've never really seen up close and personal our port and export and industrial economy, we'd love to have you at the annual meeting to be part of it. I'm certainly looking forward to attending. Um, so again, thank you so much for your time. Awesome. Great. Thank you.